what number times itself? Because we're squaring, right? The opposite of a square of squaring a number. Saying what number times itself gives you negative 25. Well, if you have a positive times a positive, you get a positive. If you have a negative times a negative, you get a positive. Is there any way to take a number times itself and get a negative? No. This is where you're supposed to think. No. What do you think? No. No. Absolutely not. There's no, we're going to call it this. We're going to say there's no real solution. Don't put no solution. That's not necessarily true. When you get to Math C, you're going to talk about complex numbers where that is possible. But for right now, for you in this class, you're going to put no real solution. You got it? Not just NA, not just nothing, no real solution. Just like that, no real solution. Now you might be wondering, what, what's that word real? Is there a fake solution? Well, no, not technically, there's not a fake solution. But there's two classes of numbers, and you've never heard of the second class of numbers, probably. Uh, but there's this class of numbers called imaginary numbers. They they go along with real numbers to make up the complex number system. Uh, everything that you've ever dealt, everything that you have lived in or driven or had anything to do with any type of engineering uses complex numbers. Uses numbers that you've never even heard of before. It's it's crazy number system. It's 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 absolutely enormous. And you'll talk about it in Math C. But there is going to be a solution to this problem when you're in the complex number system. But for the real number system, there is no solution. So if right now, for us, you do got to put no real solution. Do you, do you get me? In a while, in two classes from now, that's going to have an answer. But for right now, it doesn't. Okay? You sure you're okay with that? It seems like I'm making this stuff up, right? Like it, <laughs> but trust me, you'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. Now, how about this one? Is this different than the problem we just talked about? Yes. Why? Because the negative. Yeah, that's right. So what's the difference between here and here? Well, the negative's inside here, the negative's outside here. Here's what this one talks about. This says, hey, can you take the square root of 36? Yeah. yeah. Yes. How much is it? Six. 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 And then mm -hmm. take the opposite of that. So this is the opposite of the square root of 36. How much is this going to be? Negative six. Yeah. Now that's true. That's true. If the negative is inside your square root, there's no real solution. If the negative is outside your square root, that's okay. You can take the square root and then just make your answer negative. How many people felt that, okay with that? Is that, that negative 36? No, this is negative square root of 36. Okay. okay, now I previewed this information just a little while ago. You guys are okay with the square root of 81, right? The square root of 100, square root of 144. Those numbers are probably popping in your head right now. Square root of 64, square root of 49, square root of 25, square root of 16, square root of 9, square root of 4, square root of 1, square root of 0. All these different square roots, but then as soon as I say, what's the square root of 30? You go, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's do some critical thinking, though. I want you to really think about this, all right? Think about this for a second. What's the square root of 25? Uh, what's the square root of 36? Six. Six. This is in between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36. Do you agree? Yes. So this answer should be somewhere between what two numbers? Six and five. Six and five. Yeah, five and six. If this is between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36, then this square root, the value of it, should be somewhere between five and six. Are you with me on that? Yes. Now, take out your calculators. So no matter what, there's always a square root. There is always a square root unless, unless what happens, folks? When can't you take a square root? If there's a negative inside the square root, then you can't do it in this class. Everything else you can. So take your calculators out. Uh, as, you, as I've told you, that's a requirement for the class. You should have one. Here's what you're going to do. I want you to find your square root button. Find the square root button on your calculator. It might be above the x squared button, but it should look like this. Have you guys all found that button? Yes. You might have to press your second button to get there, a shift button or a second button. How many people uh, have it on the actual button itself? Okay, a couple people have it on the button itself. If it's above something, if it's like written in a different type of ink, like blue or yellow or something like that, you have to press your shift button and then press that button. You got me? So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead, everybody press that button right now. And then leave your calculator alone. If it still gives you zero, sorry, did, is it, did everyone do that? Yeah. If it still gives you zero, so your calculator screen says zero right now, what you need to do 
is punch in the number first and then hit your square root button. Okay? Now, if th there's either two options. Either it gave you zero still or it gave you a square root symbol. If it gave you a square root symbol, now you're going to push in 30 and then you're all going to press equals. Okay? You should get five point something. Four. Five point Four, That's it, just 5.4? 5.4772255. 5. 5. See me after class, I'll show you how to do it. Or ask, ask Brian, you can help you that. So, does that number end? By the way, how many people have calculators? Raise your hand if you have calculators. And how many of you were able to find, keep your hands up. Out of those people, how many people were able to find that number? Oh, good, that's everybody, all right. You got 5.47. Does the number end? No. I mean, not at the end of your calculator screen. Does it end forever? No. No, it doesn't end at all. In fact, these numbers cannot be represented by a fraction. They're called irrational numbers. There's two sets of numbers and real numbers. There's rationals, fractions, and there's irrationals, non-fractions. This is a set of non-fraction numbers. So, when you're approximating this, what symbol do you use if you don't have it exactly equal? What do you put up there? Yeah, the squiggly equal sign. So we'd say this is about equal to, and then you're going to round that. Let's round it to the hundredths for me so I know it's 5.4 what? Seven. Don't just tell me what your calculator screen says. You've got to round it properly. So if it says 5.477, you're going to round this to 5.4. Eight. 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 It's about, that's what this says. It says it's about 5.48. It's a good approximation for us. Do you feel comfortable approximating some numbers? We will do. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I want you to try two of these on your own. I'll be walking around if you need help on how to use your calculator. So do the square root of 43 and the square root of 62. Raise your hand if you need help figuring out your calculator. Okay. Okay, before you do this, you should have a good idea about what it's going to equal. That means that before you actually punch in your calculator, kind of think about it. Because what if you punch in the numbers wrong, or what if somehow you make a mistake on it? You want to have at least an idea about what that's going to be. Now, I know that 43 is somewhere between 36 and 49, yes? Mm -hmm. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 49 is 7. So this is somewhere between 6 and 7, probably closer towards the 7 a little bit. So 6 point, what is it? 6 point what? 5. 5. 6. 6. 6.5, 6, six. six. Well, six five, one. but you It said 5.5, five, 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 seven. So okay, 5.6, very good. Raise your hand if you're able to get 6.56. Six. Good, okay. How about the square root of 62? Now square root of 62 is between 49 and 64, so somewhere between seven and eight, probably pretty close to eight, seven point something seven high. 7.88. 7.8. Seven. 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 Do you feel okay approximating these things with a calculator? Yes. Now, there is a way to simplify radicals, these are called radicals, these square roots are called radicals, without using a calculator. I'm going to teach that to you right now. You've got to watch carefully though because it can get a little confusing if you don't know exactly what you're doing. So are you guys ready to really focus in on this thing? You're going to be, you are going to be using this for the, as long as you take any other math class. You always get square roots. You always get radicals. And so if you master this now, man, it's going to save you a lot of time. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to be able to simplify... things like... 
the square root of let's let's do a good one. Forty-eight. <coughs> and we'll be able to simplify things like the square root of fifty-four. Now I don't mean punch that in on your calculator. I mean we can make these look a lot better and be able to work with them easier without such a big number inside the radical. Does anyone remember what this number is called inside the radical? It had a weird name. Start with an R. Rational. Not rational, that would be a fraction to close though. Radicand. The radicand. Remember the radicand? That number's a radicand. What we're going to be doing is simplifying the radicand. Now here's how you do it. Firstly, can you tell me the numbers that you can take a square root of starting with 1? So I know I can take the square root of 1. What else can you take the square root of? 2? What's the square root of 2? Oh, no. 30. 4. Good. What's the square root of 4? 2. Would you agree that that's the first number besides 1 you can take the square root of? Right. Mm -hmm. So you can't take the square root of yeah. Well, you, you, I'm, I'm sorry. Take the square root of and get a whole number. Get a whole number out of it. Square root of 2 is 1.41. So that's not a whole number. So square root of 4, though, that's going to give you... What's the next number you can take a square root of? 9. Nine. Well, square root of 6 should be like, okay, what? Right? What's the next number you can take a square root of? Can you take the square root of 5? No. 6. No. 7. No. 8. No. 9. Yeah. Oh, there's one. 10. No. 11. No. 12. No. 13. 14? Yeah. 14? What's square root of 14 no, then? No, okay, 15. No, no. 16. Yes. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21. 22. 23. 24. 25. Are you seeing a pattern here? Yes. This is square root of 1 is. The square root of 4 is? 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in other words, you can get these numbers by doing 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. What's the next number going to be? 36. Yeah. 49. 49, because that's 7 squared. Do you get it? What's the next one? 64. What's the next one? 81. And? 100. How about after that? Good, because that's 11 squared. And? We'll stop it in, in just three more. They start going up pretty quickly after this. Here's the next three. You, you probably should be good up through 144 because that's on your multiplication table, right? So these numbers should be pretty familiar. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 squared. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the only numbers between 0 and 150 that you can take the square root of and get a whole number answer out of it. Are you with me on that? The only ones that exist. There's nothing else besides these from 0 to 150 that you can take the square root of and get a whole number. Everything else will give you one of those decimals. Now the next one, this is 12 squared, yes? What's the next one? 169. 169 because that's 13 squared. Here's how to remember 13 and 14. 13 squared is 169, 14 squared is 196. You just flip those two numbers. That's 13 and 14. The next one is 15 squared, which is 225. After that, you get 16 squared, which is 256, and then 17 squared, which is 343, and then you keep going higher and higher and higher. 